As far as uh, practice goes, uh, Armani Watts is uh, sick. He won't practice today. Schwartz and Sammy Watkins are getting better, but uh, won't practice today. So um, look forward to the challenge of playing the Jets. Um, good football team, well coached. And, um, you know, we've, uh, again, we've got to have a good week of practice. Time's yours. Let's go first to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Coach. Uh, good morning to you. Um, you know, obviously, Election Day is coming up next week. Just your, your thoughts, your closing thoughts on what you all view as success, uh, with what you all are doing with the voter registration that you've done thus far, and then using Arrowhead uh, as a location, polling location this Tuesday. Yeah, so listen, I, I'm proud of our guys for uh, having the wherewithal to come up with <clears throat> uh, a plan. And then for our organization, uh, Clark Hunt and Mark Donovan uh, to work with them to get it done. And I mean, you don't see that all the time. So um, that, that respect for the, for the players and the players respect for our ownership, I think is, <clears throat> is very important uh, to have. And so uh, to actually have it here uh, on campus per se, but uh, right here at Arrowhead, I think is a tremendous tribute to all that were involved in getting it done. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Andy, you've obviously had a lot of uh, guys play against their former teams. Just just generally speaking, do you feel like you get a little bit of extra out of guys when, when they're playing against a, a team that cut them? Um, I, I suppose. I mean, I, I don't know that. Um, I think what's a, uh, once a whistle blows and it's time to start, I think you kind of put that um, in the back of your mind, if that was kind of your plan, you just, you're playing and you're playing the best of your ability. And uh, that's what, that's what you end up doing. So um, anyways, that's, that's what I think. I just, you know, I haven't done it for a couple of years and watch guys uh, go through it. Um, I think that's what happens. <clears throat> Let's go next to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, good morning. Off the football field, um, it seems like the city of Kansas City is making a push to, to, to attempt to lure the Toronto Raptors here. If, if you could make a, a pitch to the Raptors of why Kansas City would be unique for them, what would it be? Yeah, well, um, I mean, it's, it's a phenomenal sports town, I guess. Kirby is what I'd tell them. And, um, and not that Toronto's not. I'm not saying that. I, uh, they're good people up in Toronto, too. So, but... Uh, I believe we'd love to have you and let's go. Let's roll. Um, uh, no, no better sports place than right here. Let's go next to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Andy, I know we're getting Travis uh, here in a little bit. I wanted to ask you just in terms of production, consistency, uh, even improving as a run blocker uh, from when he started, just where are you most impressed with what Travis has done this season so far? Yeah, well, he's obviously a complete player, pro, pro bowl player, uh, all pro player, um, record holder, all those things. Uh, but every day he comes to work, and that's the part I like the best. And he tries to get better at his game. I mean, he diligently works with Pat, diligently works with Tom in the run game, asks questions, wants to get it right, all those things. I mean, um, and – uh, wants to be the best. So, I, I mean, I, I can appreciate that. Absolutely. Go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sarin. Coach, I know uh, Brett's the guy that's that's handling, you know, looking around what's going on in the league. But just in general, the, the teams are much more aggressive, it seems, at the trade deadline now. That, it, it, you know, 10 years ago, it was like, hey, we – you know, it's too far gone. We can't fit them into our scheme. They can't learn what we're doing. But more and more, we're seeing guys do that. Why? Why, why do you think it is – uh, that, that guys are now able to change teams in season and, and be effective? Or is it just about maybe young general managers like Brett Feach that are much more aggressive than maybe the old guard? Yeah, it might be. I, you know, I, I'm not, that's a good question though, Saran. I, I think um, just with the, the way free agency sets up in its world today and the salary cap, I think people are a little bit more flexible uh, and you have to be with bringing people in and letting people go. And um and so I think just with time here, that's ended up uh, causing people to be a little bit more aggressive and feel more comfortable bringing people in. But, 
I, I can't tell you the success rate right off the top of my uh, mind here, but I could, I could uh, tell you before free agency wasn't a high success rate. I can't tell you what it is bringing guys in <clears throat> on the trades, but I, it seems like it might be a, even a little bit more successful than true free agency. We've got two more questions. We'll go with uh, Pete Sweeney and then Todd Lebo. Go ahead, Pete. Good morning, Coach. Uh, since he arrived in Kansas City, Le'Veon has just been really, I think, outward with how happy he is to be here. In your eyes, how has he been a fit inside the locker room, and why has Kansas City been such a good fit for him? Well, I, I think the offense fits him. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, he can see his talents uh, and what he does best show up um, – you know, in this offense, he can, he could see it before he got here. And then he had a chance to show it here the other day. So <clears throat> I think that for a player, that's a positive thing. And um, I don't, I can't tell you how he felt going to New York. I don't know that. So, um, but I, I think he, with ours, he could see it and, um, and we, you know, we put him to work. So I think that's what he wanted. He wants to, he wants to play. And I think he and <clears throat> he and Clyde are a good combination right there. They, uh, and he's a good person. And, you know, we have Daryl too. So <clears throat> you don't, you don't forget about Daryl, who's a good football player too. And, um, and so it all works out, you know, well for, for us in that position. We'll go to Todd Levo with the last one. Go ahead, Todd. Hey, coach from the outside, people will look and say the Jets don't have a chance, you know, 21 point underdogs, all that stuff. They haven't won a game. When you address the team, what do you tell them about, the Jets that's dangerous I and mean, how, what about their scheme or their personnel can, can provide some danger to you guys this week? Yeah. So this league is, um, is been all about parity. I mean, that's what the league strive for. And so it's never as good as you think and never as bad as you think, um, whether it's driven by the gambling or whether it's driven by the media, you know, whatever it's driven by that pre present those numbers. I, I don't pay attention to them first, but I, you mentioned them to me. So I, um, I go off of what I see on tape. I go off of that every week somebody gets picked off that was one of these favorites or whatever. And so you go back and you focus on your agenda and you study the opponent, you respect the opponent, and then you get yourself right to make yourself get better every week. And if you lose focus on that, then you have a problem in this league. I mean, there's just, these are good football players and good coaches. And so, Best in the world, right? Because you look at it. So you, you don't lose focus on that. 